Next on Worcester News tonight, a fatal fire in Upton. Neighbors are reacting to the loss of a friend. Plus, a high-speed chase in the city reaches speeds of more than 100 miles per hour. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. Those stories in just a moment, but we begin tonight with new details emerging today in the death of a Grafton woman. Right now, the woman's husband is being held in connection to her death, and tonight the victim's family is mourning their loss. Catherine Sotnik spoke to members of the woman's family and has the latest. Grieving parents and from New York State secure their daughter's Grafton home on Worcester Street Thursday night. Kelly Sugarman's grief-stricken dad tells NECN off-camera that his daughter was his only child, that he's absolutely heartbroken, his daughter was the greatest mom in the world, and that he now has to do the unthinkable, ID his daughter's body. The 36-year-old was found dead in her upstairs bedroom on Wednesday. That the Commonwealth has filed her husband, 42-year-old Michael Sugarman, seat here in court Thursday in a hospital gown, is charged with a single count of assault and battery on a family member in connection with her death. The district attorney's office says it's likely he'll be charged with murder. In court, you could see Sugarman stitches on his neck where police say he stabbed himself. They say they found him with a knife protruding from his neck. Prosecutors described more of the horrific scene in court. They forced their way into the premises. After they had forced their way in, they did a cursory sweep uh, of the inside of the residence. They found a female inside the bedroom. Uh, she was on the floor of the bedroom. Uh, she was found to be deceased with obvious bruising and trauma to her neck area. Police were alerted to the situation when the couple's five-year-old daughter was found wandering the street Wednesday morning. Police followed the child back to the house and discovered the gruesome scene. Kelly Sugarman's dad says his granddaughter just turned five this month, that she's now in DCF custody and that they're trying to get custody of her. He says it's a slow process. Prosecutors say the couple was experiencing extreme financial difficulties. And on the way to the hospital, authorities say Sugarman said he was off his medications and asked about his wife's condition. At this point, it's still unclear what horror inside the house the little five-year-old girl witnessed. And Michael Sugarman is back behind bars until his court appearance next week. His family was in the courtroom, but they had no comment. We'll take a good look at this picture. Oxford Police is asking for your help in identifying the woman in the photo. The department posting the image on Facebook Thursday. It's in regards to a theft. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the Oxford Police Department. The district attorney's office is not releasing the name of the victim in a fatal fire in Upton, but tenants in the multifamily home say the man was friendly and a good neighbor. Our Olivia Lemon has more, including what fire investigators are saying tonight. All of a sudden, somebody's running up the laundry room stairs uh, and just saying, get out, get out, there's smoke, there's, there's smoke. You know, I, I grabbed car keys and, and my phone and just ran down. John Lindy made it out safely of this multi-unit home in Upton. Unfortunately, one of his neighbors did not. Lindy and others say they know the victim as Scott, a man in his late 50s who lived alone. We couldn't open the outside door on the back, uh, so I broke the kitchen window open. I yelled and I yelled, but I just I couldn't see anything. The Upton Fire Department says the three alarm fire broke out just before noon on Main Street. The cause of the fire is under investigation. The fire department says it appears to have started on the first floor. It's where neighbors say the victim lived. It's very difficult um, during heavy fire conditions to search a building. Um, once the fire was knocked down in that part of the building, they were able to search and find the victim at that point. Fire Chief Ron Goodale says the age of the building played a factor in trying to fight the fire. It's a very old building. Um, we're in the area of, of a mill here, as you can see, once upon a time. Um, so a lot of the housing that's in this area is the result of that mill, so it is very old. The construction does play a factor. Goodale says no other injuries were reported and all other tenants made it out safely. For now, neighbors say they will remember Scott as a friendly person, always willing to help. He was very supportive of all of us. Peace. Well, that's what he was all about. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. A woman is in custody following a high-speed chase right here in Worcester. Police say a man and woman got out of a car to ask a state trooper for help. That's when the woman got back in the car and took off. Police chased her on I-290 and then Route 190 going up to 100 miles an hour. 
She hit a sign and blew out a tire. That's when police arrested her in the parking lot of the Greendale Mall. Well, a sudden woman appears in court Thursday. She's facing multiple charges after police say she ran over two women after an argument. Our Brittany Schaefer was in court today and has the details over what may have led up to the incident. 44-year-old Stacy Piercy faces a clerk magistrate. Sutton police say she hit two women with her car after an argument Wednesday. One of the women needed to be life flighted with serious injuries. In the report, was lying face down on the ground, stating she could not breathe. There was excessive bleeding coming from her face. Her clothes were dirty and torn, and that was consistent with being dragged along the pavement. I guess she ended up dragging one and ran over one. Prosecutors say the woman that was life flighted is in the ICU and will need surgery. She's presently still in the hospital. She is sedated and intubated. She needs to have major plastic surgery and reconstructive surgery done on her face. Piercy faces several charges, including assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Her bail was set at $100,000. I uh, grew up with her, yeah. and she's like a lifelong friend. Scott Labone is Piercy's ex-boyfriend and father to one of her three children. He was present in court today to support her. Labone didn't want to speak on camera, but says he feels bad for Piercy. She didn't do it on purpose. She's good, and I, I don't want to talk anymore. That's it. Labon says Piercy and the three other women involved in the altercation were neighbors. They weren't getting along for a while, and a hug between Labon and one of the women sparked the entire incident. People just tend to overreact, and it's just getting crazy in this world. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. More than 5,000 hours of volunteer work is honored Thursday by Veterans Inc. The organization holding their volunteer appreciation event tonight in conjunction with National Volunteer Week. A number of awards were handed out for volunteer work with Veterans Inc. A few of the winners putting in more than 5,000 hours of volunteer work in just the last year. Some of those recognized tonight that we spoke with say it's important to give back to those who served our country. It's really rewarding to see the smiles on their faces every day after you help them. And it's really nice to hear the stories of how their experiences of serving the country and helping us gain our freedom. So we need to step up as individuals, as veterans, stand up and help our brother, brothers and sisters out. They're those that can't help themselves. We're here to help them. Speaking of awards, the 30th annual Massachusetts Outstanding Vocational Tech High School Students Awards were tonight at Mechanics Hall. 52 students were honored. Speakers included Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito and Mayor Joseph Petty. One nominee is selected for extraordinary work from each tech school in the state. Well, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito was also in Worcester today to talk about women's issues. She spoke at the Women's Leadership Conference at the DCU Center. The Lieutenant Governor touched on the equal pay issue and stressed the importance of focusing on the younger generation, especially here in the Worcester community. When you have the next generation growing their roots here in Worcester, in this Worcester area, that's a real statement of success. Other guest speakers included award-winning journalist Deborah Roberts. This is the seventh year for the Women's Leadership Conference. Well, more food trucks are serving up lunch in downtown Worcester. Six different vendors were on the common Thursday, a move which seems to indicate the trucks are making their mark in the city. Arnie Madison has more. It's getting a little crowded on the common. The lines were usually a lot bigger, though, so today was a rare day where I actually was able to get right up there. I was, like, cringing about coming out here, but as long as it's sunny, I just enjoy, I just enjoy being out here. The lines were probably shorter because there are more options. The number of food trucks has now doubled to six. Big T's Barbecue is one of three new trucks. Today, they served up lunch for the first time in downtown Worcester. I've been trying to get a permit in the city for years, and it's just never, never uh, feasible. It was too hard to get. Uh, now uh, we have a central commissary uh, uh, over the dog father, and we're able to get our licenses through there, so it's great. Another sign the city is welcoming food trucks. It's uh, more of an effort to just create a destination, bring people out onto the common, and not necessarily compete with restaurants. And it could go a long way in feeding the local economy. I think that there's a place for them, and I think that if it's done right, it could be work out great for everyone. In addition to improving the permit process, the city is also looking at expanding areas where food trucks are allowed. 
The proposal is still awaiting a vote from the city council. Here you go, come right up. A potential big step for food trucks in central Massachusetts with a busy summer season on the horizon. I like it. I like the idea of coming in and eating outside, being in the common. Andy Madison, 